Hi, in today's video I would like to talk about small games written in Commodore BASIC. Now, I'm a really big fan of games written in smallest amount of code, especially in BASIC, and you probably all heard about one-liner game, ten-liner game and some other categories, so those type of games that really fascinates me. And I wanted to make such a game for a very long time, and now I have. But it's not easy to write such a game, because you're limited with number of lines, you cannot use real graphics, no sound or anything fancy like that. The only thing that you can actually work on is the game logic itself and playability of the game, and those things are not easy to make, you know, so that the game can be interesting and playable and fun. So today I will show you two such games that I made. The first one is ok, it's playable, it's not spectacular, but it's fun to play for a while. Uh, the other one is very dumb game, I believe this is the worst game ever written in Commodore Basic, at least by me. The reason why I want to show both of them here is to show you the difference, because the initial idea for both of these games was the same. I believe I use almost the same code, just that the end result is completely different. The one is ok, the other one is complete crap. So, yeah, let's start with the good one first. Ok, so let's see how this first game looks like. Uh, and there are actually two versions of this game. Uh, I will show you both of them here. But let's start with this um, classic one, the first one. Um, so, as you can see, Here's the code. Uh, the code is heavily abbreviated, so it can fit those 10 lines of code. And yeah, let's list it. So it looks lo something like this. I will <coughs> explain this code in detail later, but for now we will just play the game. So let's begin. So you control this uh, green um, bracket or object and the goal of the game is to reach the end of the screen by moving forward and avoiding this um, obstacle and there is also a timer in the upper right corner as you can see we are out of the time so <clears throat> this initial game was without this timer but thanks to Igor so thank you Igor who suggested um, that I <coughs> implement this timer, um, it gives a little bit more intrigue to, it, to this game, so it's a little more fun to play. So, <coughs> to actually uh, beat this timer, uh, you need to be very, very fast. And also, while trying to avoid this obstacle, now the obstacle moves uh, by two, two co uh, columns each time, so <clears throat> you have to be really precise, yeah, again, out of the time. Uh, also, the, um, as, the, as we progress uh, we, with um, our steps, um, this uh, distance that uh, this moving obstacle needs to pass is getting smaller and smaller. That means that um, um, you need to be very uh, careful with uh, your next movement. So, so as you can see, the obstacle is traveling in smaller and smaller distances and we are out of time. So what happens if we, <clears throat> if obstacles hit us, we are of course dead. Yeah, so we are kind of um, racing the time here. Come on. And <clears throat> you can of course, um, you can use any key on the keyboard to move forward. Um, and of course you can hold the key in, instead of just typing, but you need to uh, be careful and also not be hit by this obstacle and it's not easy.
Bloody hell. Yeah, so I'm almost finished. Um, yeah, so this is the first version. And I will show you the second one, of course. Um, let's, um, let's see the second version, which is um, a little bit more interesting, I would say, because <coughs> in the second version, <coughs> the obstacle is not just one, it's behaving a little bit differently. Um, you will see uh, what I mean. So here are, are obstacles which are behaving a little bit different. Uh, the goal of the game is the same. Um, you need to progress forward to reach the end of the screen. Again, you must avoid the obstacles. <coughs> uh, again, there is a timer in the upper right corner. And um, in this version we have a little bit more time because, yeah, what the hell. Sometimes you cannot, you need to wait until your path is clear. So well, now we have to wait until the path is clear. Yeah. Come on, come on, yeah. Okay, so that's the second version of this game. Um, also, <clears throat> um, I will publish the source code for both of these versions. And also, there is a <clears throat> for each of these versions, there is a version without timer. Uh, it's um, running slightly quicker. So, in that sense, it's um, much difficult to progress forward, but you're, of course, um, free to <clears throat> use whatever time you need so you don't have to chase the time so yeah so those are two versions of that game let's now break this code a little bit and make it more readable and i will explain in detail uh what each line of this uh, code do what it means and why um why is done this way so yeah let's let's begin Okay, so here we are. This is the uh, first version of the first game. Uh, and here in, in line number zero, we just uh, clear the screen and define some variables that you are going to use during this game. Uh, and then in line number one, we are poking here our player at starting position. And then we adding some color, in this case, um, green. Uh, these two variables define the um, distance for the obstacle from uh, movement up and down. And this is the um, direction of the movement. So, so here we have a couple more variables and then we jump, jump or go to, let's say, go to line number four. Now we are skipping these two lines because at the moment we will not use them. The reason is these two lines are used when we progress forward with the player um, so that we can recalculate some things. So I will get back to those two lines. So <clears throat> we are jumping at line number four and this is the beginning of our main loop of our program. So first of all, we adding new step for our obstacle, so to progress its movement. And then we are uh, calculating that next position on the screen and we are poking at that position because we, we want to check some things on, the, on that new position. And then we have this line here, which, which actually calculates the direction of our obstacle. Uh, so in case that we hit upper, upper limit, we need to change direction and also if we hit the bottom limit, then we need to change direction. So this line here actually replaces um, two if, if statements. So we are checking if 
our new position is uh, less than or equal uh, upper <coughs> top uh, position and then we um, uh, change um, dp, dp equals dp twice minus one and second if statement is in case that p is um, bigger or equal to bottom position so instead of these two statements we have this little algorithm that actually calculates that so much smaller amount of code and we are avoiding if statements okay then in line number five we are poking our um, new position for the obstacle and then we are deleting the old position for the obstacle so that we have simulation of movement uh, we are storing the current new position as the old one to use it in the next cycle and then we are checking this um, peak that we did here in this line 4 we are check checking um, did we hit uh, a player if we hit the player then uh, then we are poking um, at that position we are poking that x um, petsky character and we are also adding um, red color at that position and we are jumping jumping at line number nine so this is go to nine so in case that we are jumping on uh, line number nine um, there um, in that line let me skip to that here's that line we are just pr printing our score progress of the player and then we are writing um, game over string and here is uh, one additional if statement so uh, which is activated if a player reached the end of the screen in that case we are um, writing game end uh, to do that we actually uh, perform this little trick where we uh, delete this um, we <clears throat> delete this over um, this part this word and after we delete it we just print end so instead of game over it will print game end so it's two different states um, to end this this game okay now let's go back to line number five so we are done with line number five we are going to line number six in line number six six we are just uh, trying to read if the key is pressed by the player so in case that um, any key is pressed uh, then uh, we are um, first peeking at our new position so the new position is always forward so that means plus one uh, and if that position is empty uh, then we are poking um, <coughs> uh, a player we are moving the player at that new position uh, with Petsky character 62 and we are uh, of course poking uh, along with the character we are poking the color in this case 13 green uh, we are saving the new position here and then uh, we are checking if um, if the column of new position is greater than column where the obstacle is we are ju jumping at line number two so this is go to number two and let me show you what are we doing at line number two okay here we are at line number two in this line we are moving the obstacle for the two columns and then in this line here which is kind of scary but it's not really uh, we have a couple of ifs uh, if, if, if. so <clears throat> first of all uh, we are not allowing to have a very very small distance for the obstacle so that is impossible for player to cross through it so we are calculating that at least it needs to have five 
rows between when the obstacle goes up and down. So in case that um, the distance is currently bigger than five rows, then we can perform our next steps. And the next step is actually we are trying to do calculate here for how much will we shrink the, that distance for each step that player progress or better say the obstacle progress. Okay, so and we are shrinking by one from each side. Okay, so once we, we did that, we need to do um, another thing and that is um, we need to recalculate the position of our obstacle. So because um, the obstacle is not always starting uh, from, let's say, from the top to bottom or bottom to top or whatever in the next um, column where, where, when it moves, it actually follows the um, previous movement. So to do that, um, because for each step the, that distance is smaller and smaller, we need each time we need to recalculate our new position of our obstacle. Uh, so this whole algorithm here is used uh, to recalculate that and uh, again it replaces a couple of ifs uh, and that saves us space and CPU cycles. Okay, so here is uh, one if statement. Uh, which actually tries to detect if we reach the end of the screen, reach the end of the game, and in that, that case we are just um, uh, going on to line 9, which I show you previously, and in that case we are executing all of this and including this, uh, because in this case now we <coughs> this if statement is true and we are um, printing this game and so that's the end of the game so where was we we were at line three and okay now we are continuing again uh, if this is not the case we are not didn't reach the end of the screen end of the game we are just progressing forward line four we are repeating itself five six now where were we six okay and then uh, okay, we are at line 7. So, <clears throat> in case that we um, press a key, we, we want to move player forward, but... Uh, sorry, man. Then um, our next, that position is uh, not free, it's taken, it's not place, not empty place. In that case, we are poking um, again Petsky um, X sign at that position. Uh, we are adding a red color and we are ju jumping at line number nine. That means we are dead. So we hit the obstacles, the other words. Okay, we are going in case that we that didn't happen, we are progressing forward. And in line number eight, we have time calculation. So we are um, um, calculating um, new time. So this is the incre algorithm to increase uh, how much time is um, passed by. And this is just poke command that position um, at certain uh, screen position. It just prints Petsky character. Uh, 121 and in case that uh, we still have some time so our uh, w variable didn't reach number 20 in that case we are uh, jumping at line number four so that means we are starting all over again in case that variable w is more uh, than um, it's 20 or more in that case we are uh, progressing forward at line number nine, uh, which simply will say game over and print your score. So that's the end of the game because you're um, run out of time, right? So here's the whole game. That's all there is to it. 
there is a couple of things that I'm um, not entirely happy uh, and that is these two lines here because I need to repeat this if statement. Maybe there is some more efficient way to do this. Um, okay, and um, now what shall we do now? Now I will show you the second game, the one that was terrible. So let's try to play that. So let's see how does uh, game number two looks like. Here is the code. Again, 10 liner, but uh, this is not optimized, it's not finished. I don't plan to finish this game. It's a stupid game. But yeah, let's let's see what what do we have here. So as you can see, uh, we still have a player um, at the moment without any color. And we have obstacles that are appearing in the same column as a player. So the goal of this game is to reach the end of the screen by moving um, or over the obstacle so that's the only way that you can move so you have yeah so you have to wait until the obstacles appears um, below the player uh, in which case you can jump uh, and progress forward um, in case that you jump on empty place you're dying so that's that's the whole deal um, as the player progress forward through the um, each row in the column when it reaches the bottom it starts from the beginning um, yeah bloody hell it starts from the <clears throat> beginning uh, um, of the screen in the next column so you have okay okay we are good good so what's the problem with this game first of all it's terribly boring it's not excited at all um, it's each level is the same there is no difficult to change nothing at all it's actually the whole concept is absolutely wrong base of the code is almost the same like the previous game but this is incredibly boring game the only interesting part of this game when something is actually happening is when you die and I have another version of this game which is even better. So let me change which uh, here. I need to just change one line of code. So let me do that quickly. Previous version from this when player was not able to die. So in this case you can hold a key pressed all the time and you just wait until the obstacles appear below you, below the player, and you just progress forward. So, even more boring. Um, the only thing that you need to do to reach the end of the game is to have enough time and patience to hold the key down. I abandoned this concept, and on the same code I actually build this... Um, first game that you that you actually saw which is much more interesting a little bit different concept change in the concept of the game can make a big difference yeah that's it um i will not waste any more time on this game i will publish it <laughs> it will be um, available in uh, github so you can check it out and then destroy it afterwards <laughs> each of these versions so even the first game and this second game will be published um, there and um, for this first game um, there are two versions and for each of those versions will be version with or without timer so you can download whichever you prefer okay so this is all that i have for you today i hope that you enjoy watching this video and until next time goodbye wow. Come on. Oh bloody hell, move, move, come on, this is crap, 
acceptable outcome. Going, going somewhere. Oh, oh.